One of the questions that I get asked every so often here is why I don't just go out and get a nine to five job. And there are a few reasons for that. One of them is that I have worked a lot of nine to five jobs and I worked for the most part in offices, but I know that office culture isn't just in offices. And I find those kind of environments, they can be quite toxic. People shoved together in boxes together like that all day, who probably don't enjoy their nine to five, find other things to entertain themselves. So office bullying, office harassment, toxic workplaces. I used to work in London in big offices, so I saw a lot of that. And I don't see any reason to put myself through that again for the sake of a pay packet. One of the other things that I also learnt when I worked in companies of various sizes, both big and small, in my previous lives, is that there is no loyalty towards staff. So I worked in a number of companies where they would suddenly go bankrupt or they would decide that they would have to make redundancies and the last person to know was the guy at the bottom, the staff. And you could go from having a regular nine to five that you didn't enjoy but paid all the bills to having nothing overnight. It was one of the reasons that I worked in agencies a lot because I would be in different positions for different amounts of time. So I might be in one office for a week. I might be in another office for six weeks. Um, I might be in another office and they keep me for a year but I would always be with the agency. So if something happens to the business I was working for, the company, the office I was working in, I'd just go back to the agency and find more work. And although it didn't come with any of the benefits like um, holiday or statutory sick pay, I felt slightly more in control because if I ended up in an office where the, the people were awful, the manager was a bully, I was picked on, or the whole working atmosphere just filled you full of dread every morning. I could just go back to the agency and say, can you please find me somewhere else? You didn't have to stick with it. And that was really important. So when I stopped working in regular offices and now that I have lots of little side hustles, I feel more secure. Because as we know, if you only have to look back four years to the pandemic, companies were quite happy to lay off staff. Uh, their bottom line was their own profit margins, their managers' paychecks, their, uh, their, their shareholders and their CEOs. And the little man at the bottom, nobody cares about them. And that's still the case now. So at the moment I have... I think about eight different small side hustles and they all go into the same pot and they make up what this year looks like could be a fairly good wage for me. And what I also know is that if something happens to one of those side hustles, let's say one of my cleaning clients decides they don't want me anymore, or let's say um, the surveys work dries up or that the banking interest rates really drop, there are lots of other little things that continue to bring in money for me. So we all know the phrase, don't put all your eggs in one basket. And that's what, that's what I'm doing here. I'm keeping my eggs in different baskets. And each basket performs in different ways. Some are affected by cost of living crisis, economic problems. Um, others aren't. And you can never tell what's going to change. So... Yes, whilst my money is kind of here, there and everywhere, it comes in in bits here and it relies on me. Again, when you go into an office and do a nine to five, a lot of nine to five office jobs are not productive. So I've had nine to five office jobs where I practically sat there all day doing nothing. 
and it might sound great being paid to do absolutely nothing all day but it's just awful your energy goes your enthusiasm goes and it's incredibly bad for you and I've had jobs where I where I had that or where so I was working for an agency and I was in a particular office like a big company and the temp job that I was on ended but they didn't want to lose me because they wanted to keep me in the company in case something else came up so they'd invent a filing job and it will be filing for somebody that hasn't done any filing in a year so it's just piles and piles of paperwork and I've had jobs like that where people would just shovel the filing into the cupboards I worked for a director in a big London company and her PA was going on six months maternity leave and for X number of months before she was going and knew she was going she just stopped bothering to do any work and they were kind of stuck with her it was quite funny because I came in and the first thing I had to do was sort the filing out and you'd open this girl's draw the, the the desk drawers and they were just rammed full of paperwork where she'd be given something to file and she'd just shove it in a drawer the problem being that the director that I was working for and who she had been working for was an absolute paper hoarder and even then we were in a very digital age every email that came through she would print and then want filed she was an absolute hoarder so there was far too much paperwork it was really unnecessary really useless bits of paper that nobody needed to keep and I spent most of my first couple of months pretty much just filing and it was awful because all this paperwork should have just gone in the bin none of it was important it was all circulars it was leaflets it was quite bizarre uh, and I can't remember how long how long I was in that job for eventually and uh, I can't remember what happened but so there are there, there are office jobs like that and they're quite depressing yeah you get paid a wage but oh my goodness it's not a productive way to spend your life and I read an article not that long ago I think it was something like 40 something percent of staff or staff felt that 43 percent of their day was was spent doing useless unproductive things it doesn't surprise me at all but that's why I prefer to have the side hustles I also suffer from a border of I have a very low boredom threshold so if something becomes routine and boring and uninspiring I, I quickly switch off I have um, a cleaning job at the weekend but it's for two businesses in the same building and what I have been doing up to Christmas was going in on a Sunday, Sunday morning and crashing the whole lot out in one go. It's only three and a half hours. But already I've been cleaning for them since I think September and I'm already bored of it. Absolutely bored of it. Even though it's not a lot of work, it's short and I get to listen to podcasts as I work. So what I've started to do now is split the three and a half hours into two equal parts and I go in on Saturday morning at 10 and then I go in at, on Sunday morning at 10 and that means that I'm home by lunchtime on both days. And just that little change around of the routine just helps me keep working at it. And it may be that at some point I change around again and maybe I'll start going in on a Friday evening and doing an hour and a half and then doing the other half on a Sunday morning. And if I keep moving things around like that, it'll just keep me doing the job. It's not a lot of work. Um, but as I say, I, I do have a habit of suffering from a very low boredom threshold. If I'm not being pushed off, or I'm not doing something that interests me, I'm very bad for switching off. And I've always been like that. But when you're forced to do a nine to five, you just do it. And it's depressing and it it's energy draining. That kind of that level of boredom and routine and lack of um, being able to use your skills is incredibly boring. And just leeches all your energy. Anyway, so that's why I do it for the main reason. Um, it means that if something goes wrong in one income, I've got all the others still 
pulling their weight and it means that I will always have enough coming in. And of course lots of little side hustles means there's no chance to get bored because they're all very different. Um, they all challenge me in different ways. Some of them are financial, um, some of them are passive so I don't really have to do anything very much. Some of them I have to do things. But it means that every single day is different for me. And it means that I'm in charge and I also have enough leeway in my hours that if something else comes up I can do it or I can swap my routine around. Uh, I'm fully flexible. So that enables me to stay on my toes and stops me getting too bored. So that's another reason why I don't do the 9 to 5 because the routine is dull. And I know there are lots of people out there who just want that 9 to 5, who just want to know where the money comes from. But as we know, we don't always know where that money is coming from and jobs are very insecure now. This year isn't going to be any better. Um, prices are still rising, but they're rising a lot slower than they were last year. And they th think that's going to happen well into this year. So things are going to get even more expensive. And we don't know what's going to happen with the budget. We don't know what's going to be said in March. We have the minimum wage going up, which means that some companies will probably be laying off certain numbers of staff to try and cut back on that because god forbid you might pay your staff enough to enough to live on and that won't affect me too much i have only uh it's only the cleaning work that gets minimum wage for me and i'm already just above the minimum wage because they pay 11 pounds an hour so that will go up but it's going to be so incremental over uh, over the um, the course of a week or a month or a year, it'd be a small amount of money, but I'll talk more about that when it actually happens. So yeah, so that's 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 my that's my reasoning behind why I do what I do. And if you need the flexibility, and you're worried about where your money comes from and how insecure your money is. Multiple side hustles might be the way to do it. It might be that you only do eight hours of something there, four hours of something there, five hours of something there. But it all adds up and it really does make a difference when you put it all into the same pot. So if you're you're struggling with um, workplace loyalty, maybe this is a way forward for you. But that's my explanation of why I love running lots of side hustles rather than just having one nine to five job. Thank you for watching.